So, what's going on here? I mean, nothing is powering the light bulb when it's lighting up. There are no hidden wires, no hidden switch. Probably seen about a dozen plasma balls as a kid, but I never actually thought about how they worked. Maybe it's like wireless charging? No. Maybe it's like wireless charging. Well, I guess that might make sense, but then why doesn't it light up other devices like my phone screen? To understand how a plasma ball works, it's actually less to do with this possible, and more to do with this light bulb. The origins of the plasma ball are actually tied to a more obscure invention. You probably haven't heard of it. The light bulb. Initially, Tesla was experimenting with high-frequency electricity sent through an electrode surrounded by inert gases. We'll go into that more later. With the invention of the Tesla coil and fluorescent lights, he had both the technology and the concepts behind the plasma ball already floating around in his head. Okay, but what is it? It's gases, right? It's specifically inert gases on the periodic table. On the very far right, there's a little row of helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. The inert gases, also known as noble gases, all generally share a few key properties in understanding the plasma ball. <laughs> generally, they're very unreactive. There are a few conditions or other elements that allow for chemical reactions involving these gases. This is because of their atomic structure. They are generally very unreactive. There are very few conditions or elements that allow for chemical reactions to involve with these gases. This is because of their atomic structure. Atoms are like puzzles, except instead of tabs, atoms have an outer layer of electrons. Some atoms naturally have more spaces for connections than others. The noble gases, however, have a full outer shell. This is like if a puzzle piece didn't have any tabs at all, or any spaces. It's not really a puzzle piece at that point. I don't even know what that would be. This, this cardboard. Okay. We have most of the knowledge, pieces, pieces of information to actually understand how a plasma ball works. There's one more thing. Plasma ball, right? Pla pl plasma ball. Plasma. What, what, what is plasma, really? Well, plasma is usually defined as an ionized gas. Generally hot, but not necessarily, where positively charged ions and negatively charged ions are fairly equal and generally free-flowing in this state of matter. We have the thing, it's not just a gas, it is considered its own state of matter. One of the most common in the entire universe, actually. More than solids, liquids, gases? Yes, gases, yeah. So, now that we have all these pieces, how does it work? The electrode inside of a plasma ball is like a Tesla coil. This electrode, that is like a Tesla coil, creates an electric field inside of the plasma ball. The gases inside are noble gases, or inert gases, and they are generally not reactive, but they can still ionize. The electrodes, the electrode, creates an electromagnetic field by sending high-frequency electricity out. It creates kind of this free flow of positive and negative ions that are traveling inside. The actual tendrils you see are essentially the pathways of electricity, or ions, traveling throughout the globe. The reason it has to be an inert gas is so that it doesn't overreact um, and, you know, explode or something. So, how does it light up a light bulb without touching it? Well, 
It's because they fundamentally work on a similar concept. A lot of light bulbs have gases inside of them very similar to the gases inside of a plasma ball. The electrode, or the essentially mini Tesla coil inside of the plasma ball, creates an electromagnetic field that doesn't just stop at the, at the edge of the globe. It c continues out, obviously. Obviously? Maybe not so obvious. And this electromagnetic field affects the gases inside of the light bulb even though it's not touching it, essentially creating the same exact effect inside of the plasma ball in the light bulb. So it's actually, it's actually not that complicated.